Hello YouTube viewers this our video about Oppo F1 S 4GB RAM and 64GB ROM full review. This is 4GB RAM and 64GB ROM smartphone and you watching our technology trends channel. Don't forget to subscribe this channel for more videos. It would be easy to mistake the F1 S for the F1 Plus since they look virtually identical from the front. The mildly curved edges of the display offer a pleasant feeling when you hold this phone, and the slim bezel adds a bit of style. The phone has a pre-installed screen guard which attracts scratches fairly easily, and we think this could have been done away with since there is Gorilla Glass 4 for protection. Button placement is ergonomic although we would have liked better spacing between the volume buttons so we could distinguish them better. The sensor is flanked by two backlit capacitive buttons. Oppo also throws in a notification LED near the top. The 5.5-inch IPS display produces rich colors, and the maximum brightness level is much better than the Oppo F1 could manage. Which is a bit too coarse for a screen of this size. Even though pixelation isn't all that apparent, it would have been nice to have text and icons just a bit sharper. The all-metal body looks really good and the glossy gold trim that runs along the edges of the phone adds to the device's premium aesthetic. The F1 Plus, the Oppo F1s runs on Color OS 3.0, which makes Android look somewhat like Apple's EOS. This is fine by us. Oppo has added some tweaks of its own to the settings app. The display submenu gets a blue light filter whose intensity can be varied. The socket is on the bottom, along with a micro USB port and mono speaker. Once again, the phone handled HD media files well, including some of our high resolution test files at up to 1080p resolution. The mono speaker gets quite loud for alerts, but the effect isn't that good when watching media. The F1S gets a fingerprint sensor, which was missing on the F1, and it works very well. Just like the F1 Plus, the screen unlocks instantly. Lock Screen Magazine changes the lock screen wallpaper each time you unlock the phone. You also get a bunch of gestures including one-handed mode, however this didn't work well. Around the back, we have the 13 megapixel camera and LED flash. The battery is sealed inside and is non-removable. The SIM tray sits on the right and we appreciate the fact that it's not a hybrid dual SIM solution. Along with the two nano SIM cutouts. The front camera can record 1080p video and there are some additional shooting modes like GIF, filters, and double exposure. One of the reasons you'd pick this phone over the more obvious choices is its camera performance. You get a 16 megapixel sensor with an f/2.0 aperture that manages pretty detailed selfies in even less than ideal lighting conditions. There is slight artifacting in the dark areas of shots taken in low light, but not too much color noise, which is good. The front camera can record 1080p video and there are some additional shooting modes like GIF, filters, and double exposure. Oppo has gone with MediaTek's Montana 6750 Octa Corso C which features 8 ARM Cortex A53 cores running at 1.5 GHz. This chip is part of MediaTek's new entry-level lineup with integrated LT which was announced earlier this year. Image quality is pretty good for landscapes and macro shots. Coming to battery life, 
we managed to get 10 hours and 11 minutes of continuous video playback from the 3075 mAh battery. The F1S is yet another good product from Oppo but we really wish the company had paid a bit more attention to the little details. Oppo F1S and 22 benchmark was 42749. Oppo F1S support 10 multi-touch and display. If you like this video please subscribe our channel and don't forget like and share this video.